Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies coming at you with I think an overdue 40k video to be honest with you. Uh, the releases for Warhammer 40,000 miniatures has been a little light the last couple of weeks. I think the last video I did was Fulgrim and that's actually the Horse Heresy, not 40k if you know what I mean. There's been a lot of Age of Sigmar content drop and I've done a lot of videos on that. Um, so I decided I would come back to the 40k for all of you uh, guys out there who are hungry for it and finish off my... Um, Tyranid uh, playlist. So basically the only video I have left to do, apart from Gene Steelers, I might do the new Gene Steelers at some point soon, but I feel like Gene Steelers are Gene Steelers. Let me know in the comments if you believe that, if you think I should do a video on the new Gene Steelers. But I haven't done the new plastic Biovore slash Pyovore kit just yet. So that's what I'm gonna tackle here today. It's actually a beautiful kit, something I have been looking forward to. It just fell by the wayside at the time of making the rest of my Tyranid videos. But once I have completed that, that's pretty much the entire playlist is pretty much ready to rock and roll. Every new kit that has come out for Tyranids, whether it be the Norn Emissary, the Screamer Killer, all the different Lictor variants, or the, all of them, they're all there. So if you're ever curious about how to paint up your Tyranids, there's a, the video is out there. I've also done, I think, nine other Tyranid schemes, and all of those schemes transfer beautifully over to any uh, a model size for the entire range. So hopefully those videos will help you out in the long run. Okay, before I get into the videos, I want to say a huge thank you to my patrons. You guys are unbelievable as always. I'm super pleased to have you with me month to month. And um, if you want to get involved with that, helping me keep the lights on, the cameras rolling, there are links to it in the description below. You'll get access to things like private Discord server and an extra video every single week just for you guys. So 52 extra videos a year just for you, I think it's pretty special. Okay, without further ado, let's um let's add another turn and beastie to this pile. I don't think I could have asked for a nicer reimagining of a model. The old Biovore is one of the kits that I never bought because even when I started tearing it, it was old and awful looking. So I'm so happy to see this revised kit um, hit the shelf and be able to be joining my army currently. I wish I had two more of these guys so I could have a proper squad and feel them properly in a game. Maybe that's something that I will aim to do in the very near future. So I'm going to be going for my traditional Tyranid scheme. This is one that I think the community is getting quite well known of. A bunch of people have taken up the brush and followed me along into my Hive Fleet, a Hive Fleet Morrigan, based on Irish mythology. You can look it up for yourself, it's pretty cool. But I'm gonna base my entire army around this, the Norn Emissary being the key feature. The idea of her being the Phantom Queen, which is the Hive Fleet Morrigan's kind of a uh, a basis in in the stories so like i said i think you should check it out for yourself and see the, the reason that i named it like this i think it worked out pretty cool um, and i'm going to continue on with that for quite a large collection of miniatures and hopefully when i relaunch my website i'll have different sections available for uh, telling the story of the different armies that i do produce and there'll be a lot more background information on hive Fleet morgan in there so with that i did start by spraying the models black and then giving them an all over coat of gray sear spray as well this is, I think, the best base coat to uh, start contrasting up from. After that, it was time for Gullum and Flesh to come in, and I used this on all of the soft parts of the miniature. On the uh, the, the, the mines, the floating mines that uh, this thing can shoot out, it's obviously quite easy which parts are that, the, the nice droopy tentacles. And then the soft spot in the middle. I actually ended up doing the soft spot in a lighter color later on. But I was actually quite surprised to find out how armored a biovore actually is. Considering this is basically an artillery piece organism, it feels like it's got more armor on it than a Carnifex does. Even like the under parts of its arms, the under part of its stomach is really well armored, which is kind of crazy, but it looks really cool. But managing to pick out all those soft bits and not kind of cover the shell bits in the contrast. And then the amount of time it took me to layer up the, uh, the Stegodon scale green for the base coat of all the uh, armored chitinous parts. Um, really did let me know that there was quite a lot of pieces on this. The uh, contrast carryber, or sorry, the shade carryber crimson was then placed all over the soft bits again. This uh, turns it from being that kind of really pale and pallid looking uh, skin tone to something much more alien esque. Um, it definitely pulls it away from just you know looking like boring skin uh, and much more into the realms of uh, an alien organism. Yeah, I really like this step. I don't know, whenever I see it on the model, it just makes me happy. I think it's really cool looking. I think it's a really nice contrast to the, the cold blues that I go for for the rest of the model. Considering that I'm basing this on a kind of an, an ice world. So there's uh, snowy bases and stuff like that. Okay, then it's time for the two uh, stages of dry brushing on all those soft bits as well. So we start with Screaming Skull. And we just give that a semi-light dry brush all over the soft bits. 
like I said, the uh, the armor bits we'll be doing with our cold blue. So the skin tone, we just need to push that to a little bit more of a, of a pallid tone. But I want to leave that really rich red tone, the like sore looking skin uh, color underneath it. That kind of look of, uh, like I said, skin in the cold. Kind of what I was going for. The idea that it, most of these tyranny organisms are probably quite badly frostbitten, but they, they've evolved or adapted to be totally okay with it. Wraith Bone is the second dry brush, and that is a very, very light coat across the entire um, skin parts of the model as well, the softer parts. Like I said, this is just for the raised parts, so the higher bits. You don't need to get into every nook and cranny with this. Just the parts that are kind of pointed more up towards the light. You want to catch with a nice, light, nice very light dry brush of that. Like I said, this scheme is one of the easiest Tyranid painting schemes to do. I've done thousands of points of Tyranids in this scheme in a very little time, very little effort. So if Tyranids are something you want to collect and you want to get them done fast, perhaps this is the hive fleet for you. I then come in with the Stegonon scale green base paint and I just get one solid coat of paint on all of the armor panels of this entire beastie slash brute. And like I said earlier in the video, when painting up anything else, um, it's this stage is done quite fast. This actually took a little bit of time because there is so much armor on this thing. And I kept finding kind of sneaky other bits of armor in strange places, like, like underneath the, the tops of the arms and like tucked away underneath the model. And it was very bizarre. So if you are following along, please do take your time. Basically play Where's Waldo with armor panels for this guy and try and find each and every one of them. You'll be surprised where they kind of jump out from. And then of course, taking my time to layer in the gun as well with that base paint and did not hit any of the skin. That's the interesting thing about where we are at now. With this base coat of Stegon on Scale Green, the skin is done. We don't want to touch the skin anymore. We're going to do a little bit more to some of the, the kind of joints and stuff of the skin later on. Once again, to play into that idea of them you know, coming from a an ice world but we definitely don't want to hit any of the, with the stagon on scale green have to try and go back and repair it if you did accidentally hit it with stagon on scale green the best thing that you can do is to rinse out your brush quite fast make sure there's no paint on i believe quite a bit of water on the bristles and then wash it out of the uh the wash the mistake off with the the watery brush as opposed to trying to go back and paint over that bit after that is dried, we go in with Altiok Blue, and then we're going to layer up the uh, the armor panels. Now, as you can see, I'm doing quite a, a sharp kind of feathered look. We're following the direction uh, the armor is facing, and we're just going about halfway down each plate, and then pulling that down to the bottom, leaving the top half and in all the, no the kind of crevices and stuff like that, that nice dark um, Stegodon scale green base paint. Obviously, if it's a larger, flatter panel like this one, pretty much going to get a nice coat across the entire thing. So we're going to follow this process the whole way around this model. And like I said previously, a lot of armor. It does take a couple of minutes to get through this. Uh, even though it is quite a fast and effective way of doing it, the sheer quantity of armor panels means it will take you a little bit more time than you may have been expecting to get it done. But I do find it to be quite a relaxing, quite an enjoyable stage. I don't know whether I'm just weird, but I've always kind of enjoyed these stages of painting, the like the layering stage almost. I just think it makes the model look really sharp, makes the color kind of pop off the piece yeah, and looks really cool. So as I've been painting this thing along, I am of course painting those spore mines to match. So they got all the same uh, kind of stages for the for the base, um, for the skin paint, your Gullum and Fesh, Carryberg Crimson, two dry brushes, and then the armor bits of course, Stegon and So exactly the same stages all the way along, follow that along and they'll match in beautifully. Doom Bull Brown was then brought out and then this is watered down quite heavily until it's like almost a like glaze consistency. And then all I'm using this for is to pin wash in between all the armor panels with a nice dark rich brown color. This helps to separate all of those blue tones. And once again, add in that really organic alien look to the piece. Like if the blue armor is, uh, is just left as this like solid blue thing, it looks a little bit too much like you know, synthetic armor panels like a, like a tank or a space marine as opposed to adding in that like really ready soft skin tone plus the brown mixed in with the, the armor. It really does set it off and give it that, that look that I'm really pleased with. So as you can see with all the brown painted in, it's definitely looking more, I don't know, xenotastic maybe, I don't know. 
I love it. Like I said, I have been following along with the Spore Mines and painting them to match as I'm going in here with the Dimble Brown to pin wash these as well, just so they match in beautifully. In the game, these things, the uh, Pyrovores can fire out Spore Mines, landing it, not the Pyrovores, the Biovores do that, sorry. So you can deploy these little squads of uh, Spore Mines around the battlefield from these guns, which I think is very cool. Volibus Pink is basically the last color that I use on this model, and Volibus Pink is what I use for all of the soft bits in between all of the joints. The story is that these guys have been um, kind of uh, genetically engineered by the hive mind to survive on colder planets. That means a higher concentration of like kind of rich thick blood runs through all of their joints to make sure they don't freeze or get stiff in the war zone and they continue to move freely, move fast and fight aggressively on any planet that they come across. So hence the Volopus Pink, which like I said, will paint into all of the the vents and all the bits of the model that are supposed to move. So you'll notice in between leg joints and stuff like that, there's gonna be this extra soft spot. It helps to break up all the skin tone. I also decided to do it across the, you know, basically the face of the spore mines, that nice rich uh, volibus pink tone, just to help it blend in a little bit more. And yeah, I think the skin on the tentacles is more enough to carry that off. And with those bits applied, that basically brings an end to painting up my first new Tyranid Biovore. I'm really happy with how it turned out. Added snow texture paste to the base and finished off the volumes pink on all the soft bits. Absolutely love how it looked. Wish I had two uh, more of these guys to see what an entire unit looked like with the nine spore mines. I think that would look pretty cool. Obviously, I took a few nice images for you guys, some stills so you can see what it will actually look like. Maybe white was a bad idea for taking those photographs. It's kind of a bit muted here, but you get the idea. I think it definitely has that crazy alien feel to it, which is really what I was aiming for. I never want Tyranids to look natural. I want them to look unnatural uh, or as unnatural as possible. Okay, guys, and there we have it. The new Biovore is painted up and ready to hit the tabletop, or at least I think it's ready to hit the tabletop. I would rather field it in a squadron of three of them, or a brood of three of them, should I say. So hopefully I get my hands on a couple more of them and a couple more of the new Lictors um, before I start playing my new Tyranid army list. So uh, yeah, I hope you guys found this video helpful, interesting, exciting, any of those things. If you did, make sure you give the video a like. Ask me any questions you want in the comments below. Let me know any Tyranid schemes you want to see or any videos you're looking forward to that I haven't done yet and you're curious about. I'm always open for suggestions. Make sure you're already subscribed to the channel. It makes a huge difference. Appreciate you sticking around to the end, guys. I'll see you in the next one.